Hello, 9th standard, CBC children. Have a good day. Have a nice day. I hope you are doing well. Today, we are going to do the same ch topic, chapter 7, Diversity in Organisms, part 4, as video number 19A. Right? This video number 19A, continuation, we are going to do. And please understand, in the board, I have written as video 19. That it is to ignore. This is video number 19A. We will continue the lesson. Hello, CBC children. Nine standard. Have a nice day. Have a good day. I hope you are doing well. And you are gone through the videos so far. For chapter 7, Diversity in Living Organisms. Now also, I am continuing the same chapter 7, Diversity in Living Organism as video number 19 and part 4. Okay. In part 1, we learned introduction and five kingdom concept. Part 2 as <coughs> plant kingdom details. Part 3, criteria for classifying animals as kingdom animalia. And now we are going to see the saline features of animal kingdom of invertebrates and vertebrates. I hope you can recollect those points so far completed. Okay? Now first invertebrate phylum porifera phylum porifera invertebrate phylum porifera for invertebrate phylum porifera, they are invertebrate absence of backbone. They are unicellular or very exceptionally multicellular. I think so. I am not sure with that example. And then uh, they have pore bearing structures, and those pores pore are opening exterior. To the through the opening called spicules or uh, osculum chalola, and the malari structure it is and the whole body they are like provided with the numerous spicules so that they are in contact with the exterior and it is mostly marine form almost all of them are aqua showing aquatic habitat marine form okay so that is for uh, <coughs> phylum porifera. Where what is given in our textbook? It is as phylum porifera. <coughs> the word means organism with the holes. Another pore bearing chelo. These are non motile animals attached to some solid support. They are holes or there are holes or pores. All over the body. These leads these lead to canal system that helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen because it is marine water forms. <coughs> these animals are covered with a hard outside layer of skeleton. The body design involves <coughs> very minimal differentiation and division into tissues. And they are commonly called sponges. <coughs> they are marine habitat. Example, Cycon porifera and euplectelia. Cycon porifera, euplectelia. Cycon porifera, euplectelia. So, yeah, example for sponges. Right? The next one, phylum silicrata. Phylum. Silentrator, they have <coughs> phylum silentrator, they are characterized by radial symmetry, characterized by radial symmetry and diploblastic. They are showing radial symmetry and diploblastic. Diploblastic, na, I am 
presence of outer ectoderm and inner endoderm. Middle mesoderm is absent. Instead, they are represented by non-cellular mesoglia. Non-cellular mesoglia. Hence, they are called diploblastic animal. And they are characterized by the presence of cylindron or gastrovascular cavity. Cylindron or gastrovascular cavity. Okay. And they have a special structure called nematocyst on the tentacular region. So that the tentacle when they catch the prey it has to secrete a poisonous substance to get the prey. To catch hold of the prey it secretes. So that is called nematocyst. Right? So we say radial or diploblastic animal. Diploblast presence of non-cellular mesoglia and cylindron or gastrovascular cavity and presence of nematocyst. Go through this. Hmm. So, <coughs> this uh, phylum cylindrator characterized by radial symmetry and diploblastic animal and uh, body cavity is called gastrovascular cavity or cylindra and the presence of nematocyst. It is a characteristic feature of phylum cylindrator. Hmm. Example, phylum cylindrator. Example, as hydra. Example, hydra, sea anemone. Hydra, sea anemone and jellyfish. <coughs> hydra, sea anemone and jellyfish. In the particular the examples and the pictures or figure, whatever is available, that will run on the video that you will see. Okay. The next phylum platinum elementus. Phylum platinum elementus. They are again bilateral. They are bilateral triploblastic. They are bilateral and triploblastic and pseudo -cylomate. sorry they are acylomate animal they are triploblastic and acylomate animal and it is bilateral triploblastic acylomate animal and body is segmented in platinum elementus body is segmented or unsegmented segmented Example, tapeworm. <coughs> segmented, example, tapeworm. Unsegmented, example, ring of load. Right? And all of them are mostly, they are parasitic form. They are parasitic form. And then in tapeworm, the uh, segments, they are called ruglatid. The segments are called ruglatid. In the phylum platinum. In tape one, the segments are called ruglatid. And then they reproduce both by asexual and sexual method of reproduction. So phylum platinum is enlangula. Triploblastic, bilateral, acylomate, segmented and unsegmented and they are parasitic form. So, yeah. The next one, phylum as helminthus. Phylum as helminthus. As again, para bilateral, triploblastic and it is pseudo -cylomate. It is pseudo -cylomate. Absence of coelom. Actually, coelom is not, but the cells are not true in nature. They are false cells filled with the mesenchymal cells. False tissue mesenchymal cells. Okay. So, platinum helminthus, analog of the 
body of animal in this group is far more complexly designed than in other two groups so far we have studied bilateral and then there are three layers triploblastic and then there is a uh, true body cavity no true body cavity acellum and body is flattened dorsi ventrally that is uh, flat top to bottom body is flattened adalana flat worms are okay and then they are either free living or parasitic some example planarian or parasitic as liver fluke and tapeworm free living and planaria planaria edukking avo varudhu reproduction regeneration pachirukkola adhu example planaria right the next one phylum ascelmethes or nematoda abingirudhu they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and the body is cylindrical unsegmented and it is mostly parasitic form causing diseases and the elephant iasis is caused by the uh, ascelmet as filarial worm so intestinal worm round worm and pin worm so the quandela kala puchi varudhu chiruvale vaitla puchi irukum alla adha round worm and pin worms i hope you understand this huh? so adha adha phyla uh, anelida are you are clear shall i read this hmm? phylum anelida fifth one phylum anelida here and again in the same ellu jalana idella bilateral triploblastic and u celum is animal true celum is present and then they are segmented anelids are segmented and that segmentation for example this is atworm example atworm atworm la this is the mouth region right and then the segments of body is segmented like this right and the segmentation here it is a cylindrical body it is a segment அப்புறம் இது ஒரு செக்மெண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் அனதர் இந்த மாதிரி ஒன் அண்ட் பிலோ தி அதர் when they are arranged that is annulation that is annulation அனலத ஹென்ஸ் தி நேம் அனலிடா ரிங் லைக் அனுலேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் பிரசன்ட் ஆன் தி செக்மெண்ட் ஹென்ஸ் தி நேம் அனலிடா எக்ஸாம்பிள் எட்வோ சரியா தென் திஸ் phylum anelida it shows phylum anelida shows metamerism characteristic feature of the phylum metamerism what is metamerism as every set of internal organs present in each segment every set of internal organ they are present in each segment <coughs> mouth or buccal cavity ile irukku thodangi digestive system idu varaikum varu right and then uh, uh, excretory organ nephridium but then uh, it is present between 6 and 7 7 and 8 8 and 9 and my every septic internal organs will be present and that arrangement is called metamerism okay so here nephridium nephridia or the excretory organ and uh, primitive occurrence of digestive system nervous system and circulatory system will be present so this organ system present will up, will start from this phylum anelida onwards otherwise appearance of the organ system commences from this phylum anelida seriya and then here in uh, anelide the circulatory system it is of closed type closed type abina blood is circulated within the blood cell so it is closed type of circulation 
I hope you could follow this. Huh? So these are the features. And then in uh, phylum annelida, adverb, animal is hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite na both the hermaphrodite. Both the sex organs, testis and ovary, they are present in the same animal. So it can it shows a sexual reproduction, but uh, male will mature first, male gonad will mature first and then female sex organ. Ovary will be maturing next. So this, this is hermaphrodite organism. I hope you understand this. Huh? These are the features for phylum annelida. So let us this. Hmm? Then phylum arthropoda. Go through panel saying it. Annelids are the go through panel. Phylum arthropoda. Phylum arthropoda. Arthro means joint. Podana leg. So this is jointed legs. This is jointed legs. Arthropod, they have jointed legs. So yeah. Again, first need a children of bilateral. Bilateral triploblastic you see the male animal. So yeah. And they have presence of jointed legs. And in cactus, there are <coughs> there are three pairs of legs. There are three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings. Locomotory organ, both legs and wings. Three pairs of legs as present in the thoracic region. In cockroach, <coughs> In cockroach, cockroach the Here this is prothorax, mesothorax, metathorax. So here is the head portion. This is thorax. This is thorax and this is abdomen. Three region body is divided into three region. It is having outer exoskeleton. It is having outer exoskeleton where the thoracic region divided into three segments. Prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. So in the moon region a pair of legs will be present. And starting from the meso and metathorax pair of wings are present. So in arthropod, the locomotory organs are jointed legs and wings. Okay. Then you will say the body cavity it shows it has exoskeleton, chitinous exoskeleton and then the body fluid it is called hemolymph. Normally, in all uh, other uh, phyla, the blood will be having the red pigment uh, hemoglobin, but in phylum arthropod, hemoglobin is absent. So, they are just, it is present with the lymph. So, it is hemocyte, hemolymph, and it is open type of blood circulation. The blood is just bathing in the body cavity and it is white in color, absence of hemoglobin, right? And then the excretory organs in, uh, um, what is it, in phylum arthropods, they are Malpighian tubules. It is called Malpighian tubules, Manusha. Malpighian tubules. Excretory organs are Malpighian tubules, right? And the respiratory organ, it is book lung. Respiratory organ, it is book lung and with the trachea and spiracles. 
trachea opening outside through spiracles. Namade lower class leper chikonda, in fact, six standard leper chikonda. Respiratory organs, when living things respire and grow, the respiratory organs are small and the spiracles present in cockroach. Okay, so here reproduction it exhibits sexual dimorphism as male and female separate. Okay, and the male reproductive system is separate in male cockroach and female reproductive system is separated. Female cockroach. Okay, so arthropod probably the largest group of animals. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented. That is open circulatory system. So the blood does not flow well in flow in the blood vessels. The coelomic cavity is blood filled, and then uh, jointed legs. Example. Prawn, butterfly, housefly, spider, scorpion, and crab. This is for phylum arthropods. Okay. The next phylum in uh, invertebrate like phylum mollusca. Phylum mollusca. Animals there is bilateral symmetry. Coelomic cavity is much reduced. There is little segmentation. And they have an open circulatory system and kidney-like organ of respiration, excretion. And there is a foot called a muscular foot to move around. And molluscan, they show very, very slow movements. Example, apple snail and freshwater mussel. Apple snail and freshwater mussel. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is for phylum mollusca. Then echinodermata, it is spiny skinned echinoderms, spiny skinned invertebrate, right? They are exclusively free living marine form and they are triploblastic with coelom, true coelom and they have a special water vascular system and that water vascular system is carried out by atavascular system it is carried out by a structure called tube feet atavascular system carried by a structure called tube feet example starfish in starfish production in starfish there is dorsal sila ventral side and then on the ventral side we find structure like this. These are the tube feet. This is tube feet. We will have a lab lab school that specimen and learn to cut away. This is tube feet. This is called tube feet. Where it actually moves from one place to other with the help of tube feet that is called water vascular system. So they also have peculiar water driven tube system that they use for moving around. They have hard calcium carbonate structure that they are used as skeleton. Example starfish and sea urchin. So this is for phylum echinodermata. Echinodermata and that's one spiny skin. Okay. So these are for characteristic features of phylum. Either one. Phylum, periphera, celebrator, platyhelminthus, ashelminthus. It is also known as nematelminthus, analida, arthropoda, mollusca and echinoderma. These are all invertebrates. And then further, it is chordata that shows bilateral symmetry, coelomate animals. Further, they are classified into protochordates or prochordate and vertebrate. Prochordates, they are further classified into subclass, semi-class, sorry, 
hemichordator, urochordator and cephalochordator. And these urochordates, they are characterized by the presence of notochord, invertebrator, absence of notochord. So here in this urochordate, first appearance of vertebral column, that is a miniature structure. So it is known as notochord. Okay, so this is notochord. Solution. That is known as notochord. Right? And the example as for the prochord is these are even bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, true sealer. They show presence of notochord. Notochord is a long rod like structure that runs along the back of the animal separating nervous system and the alimentary canal. It provides space for muscles to attach for easy movement. I hope you understand. Hmm? Typical example balanoglasses ascidian and amphioxus. Balanoglasses ascidian and amphioxus. Right? And then phylum vertebrata, they are characterized by notochord, dorsal, nerve cord, triploblastic, pad, gill pouches, and coelomic animals. Okay? So here, phylum <coughs> vertebrata, phylum vertebrata, it is as class pieces. Class pieces amphibia, class pieces amphibia, reptilia, reptilia, apes, and mammals. This is the name of the book. The pieces amphibia, reptilia, apes, and mammals. Right? First, habitat. First one the habitat, it is aquatic, habitat, aquatic, amphibious, amphibious and then terrestrial and terrestrial, here in the way terrestrial, okay, we will just continue. Hmm. So this exoskeleton is the <coughs> habitat. Class pieces, aquatic form, amphibian, <coughs> amphibious amena. It exhibits both land water and land. Moisture is needed to complete its life cycle. And then uh, reptilia, eggs and mammals, they are terrestrial form. And then they have exoskeleton, exoskeleton outer covering of the body. Where here they have scales. This is the moist skin. They have scale, moist skin, reptilia, dry scales. Apes when the feathers. Mammals when the fur and skin. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this uh, pieces when the placoid scale. This is the placard scales. Those are eating fish on a technique. Scales are the one one good one good arrangement. This is the one good one arrangement. Yeah, this is the placard scales. Right? And then uh, <coughs> amphibious, it exhibits two modes of life. First one is water, it is tadpole form. Tadpole form and then adult frog. Yeah. So the tadpole form and then it is present in water. So it is having a normal skin. When it is adult, it is having moist skin. Whereas reptilia, it is dry scales. Example, snake, lizard, color tissue, garden lizard, one other having dry horny scales. Dry horny scales and here is another example feathers where birds they have 
four limbs modified into feathers. Okay. And then next one the mammals, the whole body, it is provided with the fur and the higher animals the fur in the skin and the ad particular kunya ad clubs in the charachary and fur otherwise normal skin. So this is exoskeleton. So yeah, the next one it is respiration. Respiration here respiratory organ it is gills in amphibian it is gills uh, skin gill skin and lungs in tadpole form it is gill respiration in tadpole form it is gill respiration and uh, skin and the moist skin cutaneous respiration and uh, lungs for adult frog. When the frog is in land, it is lungs. Right? Whereas reptilia, again it is lungs. It is lungs. It is lungs. This is respiration. Okay. Whereas circulation, otherwise heart, chambers of heart, chambers of heart, it is two chambered heart, three chambered heart, four chambered, four chambered, four chambered. Same time, this two chambered heart, this is two auricles, sorry, one auricle and one ventricles. One ventricle. One auricle and one ventricles. Whereas in amphibian, two auricles and one ventricle. Three chambered heart now. Two atria, auricle is also known as atria. So two atria and one ventricle. Whereas here in reptiles and uh, age, it is uh, reptiles learn the two atria and two ventricle, but they are incompletely divided. Whereas in uh, age, there are two atria and two ventricle. Mammals learn well defined a heart structure. Two atrium and two ventricles. Okay. And in uh, lungs of age, it is characterized by the aerial mode of life. So for aerial mode of life, it is having the lungs also adapted in such a way that they have gas sacs. So they have gas sacs on the lungs. And in bones are having Lightweight. They are called pneumatic bones. Lightweighted bones in age, they are known as pneumatic bones. Okay. So here, this is for heart respiration. So we are saying excretion. Excretion. Yellow same up. Excretion. It is by a pair of kidney. Here also kidney, kidney, kidney. Whereas in mammals. Other the excretory product sweat. Sweat is also a type of excretory elimination, eliminatory product. Okay, so sweat is another eliminatory product. And reproduction, all of them will show sexual reproduction. All the five classes showing sexual reproduction. I hope you are able to follow this. Hmm? So here, first class pieces, they are fish, they are exclusively water living animal, their skin is covered with scales and plates, they obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using gills, body is streamlined and muscular tail is used for movement and they are cold blooded and their heart have two chambers. They lay eggs, oviparous external fertilization. I am going to tell you again. Oviparous external fertilization. And uh, some with the skeleton entirely of cartilage, such as shark, others with the bone and cartilage. I hope you understand. Hmm? So, here <coughs> that is for fish. 
Then class amphibia. These animals differ from fish in the lack of scales having mucus gland in the skin. Another moist skin. And three chambered heart. Respiration gills in the tadpole form and the lungs of the lateral shell form. They lay eggs again. External fertilization. External fertilization. 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 External. In the external. In the aquatic form, it will do external fertilization. In the internal fertilization. So, the external fertilization. Example, frog, toad, salamanders. Example for amphibian, frog, toad and salamanders. Right? Then class reptilia, cold blooded, have scales. Scales on the dry horny uh, scale and respiration through the lungs. Three chambered heart and crocodile will have four chambered heart. Actually, we will three chambered chandra, but it is incompletely divided four chambered heart. And in crocodile alone, it is four chambered heart. Crocodile four chambered heart. And then they lay eggs with a tough covering and do not need to lay eggs in water. They are oviparous, but they lay eggs in land. And snake, turtle, lizard, and crocodile are examples of reptilia. Common example is the garden lizard. Next, class apes. Warm blended have four chamber. They lay eggs out of covering feathers. Four leaf modified into feathers. And uh, they bear uh, bones are light in white. So it is pneumatic bones. They are called pneumatic bones. And the lungs have air sacs. That is characteristic of the class eggs. So yeah. So, example, all the birds. Then, mammals, they are warm-blooded animal with four-chambered heart and they are characterized by the presence of mammary gland in female and in male it is present, mammae chalva. Mammae is present in male but it is a vestigial organ. What is vestigial organ? An organ which is present in a body, in an animal, but it's a functionless. That is called vestigial organ. So, yeah. And uh, they produce young one, so viviparous. With Allah, oviparous animal, with the viviparous. Mammals alone, viviparous animal. So, yeah. Except uh, egg laying, a mammal with the platypus. Okay, platypus on the egg laying mammal. So these are all oviparous. Other three, it is oviparous. Oviparous, ego oviparous, ego oviparous, ego oviparous, ego oviparous. Viviparous animals which give birth to young one, they are called. Oviparous animals. I hope you understand. Hmm? So here, uh, platypus and ignida, animal name called ignida and platypus, they are egg laying mammals. All others are, uh, are oviparous animals, another one, viviparous animal. So, yeah. so these are the characteristic features of. Phylum vertebrata coming under cardiac. Are you clear? What else should I go through? Are you clear? Can you? 
understand? Hmm? The next one is to understand this as uh, classification. We are talking about layer yeah. as uh, one more. Good. Here is given as uh, class pieces. Amphibia, reptile, apes. In that habitat on the pieces, aquatic. Habitat on the aquatic. The channel is not okay. First, you should say about habitat, skin cover, and all that. Here, exoskeleton and uh, skeleton. Exoskeleton. That's it. Exoskeleton. Escape, exoskeleton, exoskeleton, and then nature of respiratory organ, as respiratory organ, and then chamber of heart reproduction and excretion of electrolytes, reproduction and excretion of electrolytes. The comparative study Nama Bukla Ilai Anna Wanaka Tell you Maybe understand hmm? So then, then The largest group of animal is Phyla Arthropoda They are <coughs> characterized by the Presence of jointed leg Bilaterally segmented Open circulatory system Are you clear? Hmm? And then <coughs> Butterfly and assign this uh, given animal to read phylum and what are the characteristics. Na? What have we to write? We will write butterfly belongs to phylum arthropoda due to the presence of the following characters. In the jointed legs, pair of wings, hmm. <coughs> bilateral symmetry, presence of coelom. And appear, sorry, presence of spiracles. And then you have to say. I, I hope you understand. Hmm? Then what is the function of notochord? No, notochord provides space for muscles, darkness for the ease of movement. Notochord, they attach, they provide space for muscles, darkness. Ease of movement. Ease of movement. Okay. Then characters of chordates have a notochord, dorsal nerve cord, triploblastic animal, pad gill pouches, and they are coelomic animals. I hope you understand. Hmm? That is a question. Why do we keep both snake and turtle in the same class? Because both of them are cold blooded and they have scales breathing through lungs and three chambered heart and they do not lay eggs in water. They don't lay eggs in water. So animals we understand we come across two terms. Poikilotherm and homeotherm, animals which have fluctuation in their body temperature, mostly aquatic form, they are called uh, poikilothermic animal, animals which have constant body temperature like that of uh, mammals, they are called homeothermic animals. I hope you are able to follow this. So these are the characters for phylum vertebrata. I hope you are able to follow this. Huh? In the table as such, not given in your textbook. So, I will pass panne, go through panne, understand panne ko. as usual. Whatever you are not able to follow, make a note. We will clarify in the clearing session. Right? So, we will continue in the next video session. Thank you.